Good morning, everyone. This is Mrs. Belcher from the Counseling Office. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about brain basics. This lesson targets understanding the basic brain structure and function of the brain. Before I forget, if you haven't already taken the pretest, please make sure you go into Tiger Days and click the link for the pretest. Teachers, please pause the video if your students have not done the pretest yet. Okay, today this lesson targets the understanding of basic brain structure and function of the brain. The objectives for this lesson are to be able to explain the four main areas of the brain, including the brain lobes, to be able to explain the function of the four main areas of the brain, the brainstem, cerebellum, limbic system, and cortex, and to make use of the hand model of the brain. First, we're going to start by playing Simon Says. In a minute, you're going to pause the video and you're all going to play Simon Says. Teachers, you can be Simon, or you can have one student be Simon. In a second, you will see I have given you a few starter commands to say. Please pause the video and play Simon Says for five minutes or so. All right, everyone, stand up and let's get started. Okay, hopefully we're all able to get up and move around a little bit. Does anyone know what parts of the brain they just used to play the game? You actually used all areas of your brain. You might be wondering why you just played Simon Says. We'll get back to that in a little bit, but for now we're going to teach you a little bit about the brain structures, which will provide the foundation for future lessons and activities. Let's take a, quick vi let's take a look at this quick video which has some fun facts about the brain. fascinating part of the human body. Not much to look at, it resembles a spongy mass of tissue, feels like tofu, and weighs roughly four tubs of butter. Our brain is actually made up of mostly water and about 10% fats, while our brain only makes up approximately 2% of the entire body's weight, it uses a massive 20% of the body's energy. The brain's basic building blocks are known as neurons and we have around 100 billion of these, each with between 1,000 to 10,000 connections to other neurons, creating neural pathways or roads within the brain. There are literally trillions of neural connections within the brain. Similar to a city's electrical power grid, information is passed along these roads through a series of chemical messages and electrical impulses. As all of this activity takes place, our brain generates between 10 to 25 watts of power, enough to power a light bulb. Over the course of one day, your brain generates more electrical impulses from firing neurons than all of the telephones in the world. So really, your brain isn't just a spongy mass of tissue. It's your most complex organ, a power station that connects your every thought, movement and feeling. And it's firing right now. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the brain structure. We're going to learn a little bit more about the parts of the brain, which are the brainstem, cerebellum, limbic system, and cerebral cortex. The cerebrum. This is the upper part of the brain, sometimes called the cortex region. This area is responsible for higher levels of thinking, including critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, logic and reasoning skills, and cause and effect of our actions. For example, you might be thinking, what if I find a $20 bill when I walk in the hallway? What are my options? What is the best choice? This is problem solving or cause and effect of our actions. You would be using your cerebrum when making these decisions. The limbic system. This sits on top of the brainstem and, and is buried in the center of your brain. It is often called the emotional brain and is the source of our emotions and motivations, especially those linked to survival such as fear and anger, as well as our responses to rewards and punishment. The limbic system is also involved with feelings of pleasure. In future lessons, we will learn and talk a little bit more about this part of the brain. Sometimes the limbic system makes us react without thinking or using the rest of our brain. We will talk more about this in the future. The cerebellum. This is the back base of the brain, also called the small brain or little brain. 
The cerebellum is an extremely important part of the brain. The cerebellum makes up only 10% of our brains, but it holds, up, it holds nearly half the neurons in the entire brain. It has many vital functions, such as being highly responsible for balance, posture, motor control, language, attention, and mental imagery. Recent studies have also shown that the cerebellum plays an important part in our cognitive functions, one being our attention, especially the way we focus and capture images. Lastly, the brainstem. This connects the brain and the spinal cord. Sometimes it's called the reptilian brain. It controls many basic functions, such as heart rate, breathing, eating, and sleeping, the main functions that keep us alive. The brain develops from the back to the front, the brainstem to the cortex. So that means teen brains are not fully developed. They are still being developed. They are under construction, per se. Neuroscience research now says that a person's brain may not be fully de developed until they are 25 to 30 years of age. Now let's think back to our Simon Says game. You're going to play this game again, but this time pair up with the person sitting next to you. Please do not move seats. This time you are going to write down if you think any of the tasks you are going to be asked to do fit with a certain area of the brain. For example, Simon says blink twice would be an example from the brainstem area. Blinking is an automatic response where we don't have to tell our brains or bodies to blink. Teachers, in a minute you are going to pause the video once again and allow 5 to 10 minutes for students to work on this task. Students, I have helped you a little by giving you the four parts of the brain on my screen. Teachers, after you have given five to ten minutes, please bring the group back together and invite them to share their answers. If answers vary from one group to another, allow the students to share their thinking process so you can all hear how they came up with, different, with a different category than you were expecting, or possibly the majority of others did as well. Please pause the video now to discuss the Simon Says statements. Okay, how did you do? Here are the answers coming up. If Simon says to march in place, you would be using the cerebellum, because the cerebellum is used for balance and motion. If Simon says hop on one leg, you would also be using the cerebellum for balance and motion. Simon says take two deep breaths. This, for this part, you would be using the brainstem, because this is a basic automatic function of taking a deep breath. If Simon says to write down your answer, would you rather go back in time or visit the future? You would be using the cerebrum because this is for critical thinking and decision making. If Simon says write down the feelings that you think someone may feel if they have just received a gift, you would probably be using the limbic system since this is for emotions. Okay, we are going to watch one more quick video about the structure of the brain. Now, you probably know the name Dan Siegel. He's one of the giants in the field of interpersonal neurobiology. And Dan came up with a lovely hand model of the human brain. So let's kind of go through the hand model of the brain. And this can be useful for you to understand, but at times it might be useful for you to actually share this with your client. The wrist and the forearm coming up to here is like your spinal cord. And Right here at the, uh, the end of the wrist is like the base of your skull. And here, at the bottom of your palm, this is like the reptile brain, the life support system of the brain. So, you know, if the rest of your brain is wiped out through, say, for example, a stroke or a car accident, this life support part of your brain, the reptile brain, can still keep your body alive, can still keep all your organs functioning and your breath and your heart and so forth. And this is where a lot of autonomic nervous system operates and stems from this reptile brain. Now, above the reptile brain is the mammalian brain, often called the limbic brain or the emotional brain. 
So reptiles, they've got the fight or flight response, or they've got the freeze, shut down, flop and drop response, but they don't really have anything that is even remotely close to the, the complex emotional states that we see in mammals. And the limbic brain has many different parts to it, but two in particular that we'll be looking at in this course are the amygdala and the hippocampus. Now, don't worry about memorizing those terms for now. We will revisit them later. But this kind of is the, the middle brain, the limbic brain, the mammalian brain, basically responsible for emotions. Now, on top of the limbic mammalian emotional brain, you've got the cerebral cortex, the thinking cap of the brain. The cerebral cortex is much thicker in mammals, but especially so in primates, and particularly so in human beings, more so than any other primate. And this cerebral cortex, the thinking part of the brain responsible for consciousness and cognition. And right at the front of the cerebral cortex, you have the prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that's right up here at the front of your forehead, above your eyes. And particularly important to us is the medial prefrontal cortex, this bit in the middle right at the front, this bit up here, this plays a very important role in mindfulness and awareness. So let's just go through it again. You've got your spinal cord, you've got your reptile brain, underneath your cerebral cortex you've got your mammalian brain with the amygdala and the hippocampus responsible for emotions, and then you've got your cerebral cortex, your thinking cap of the brain on top, and the medial prefrontal cortex right here in the center of the front right there. Okay, hopefully the hand model video gives you a good way to visualize the different parts of the brain. Okay, next we're going to learn about the lobes of the brain. There are four lobes in the brain. Each lobe is responsible for different tasks that are important in our daily lives. One lobe is responsible for vision, another for making decisions, another for understanding depth perception, so we know how to go up and down stairs, and finally another one is responsible for memory and our sense of smell and hearing. We're going to watch another video about the lobes of the brain. This is what a human brain looks like. It looks kind of like raw hamburger, but each part of the brain is responsible for different tasks. I'm Ali Astrocyte, and you're watching Neurotransmissions. This week, we're going to talk about the different structures of the brain, the roles they play, and how to tell if it's cooked just right. Yes. If you had to guess, how big do you think the human brain is? Well, my head is about this big. So, this big? Or maybe this big. Actually, the human brain is only about as big as your two fists held together, like this. The surface of the brain, however, is much larger. You know how pictures of the brain look all wrinkly? <laughs> well, your brain is essentially folded up so it can fit more in your skull. If you unfolded all of your cortex, just the outer layer of your brain, it would cover a space of about 2.5 feet squared. That's as big as this. Let's see if we can make it brain-sized again. usually divide it into four main lobes, named after their nearby skull bones. The occipital lobe at the very back, the parietal lobe at the top, the temporal lobe on the bottom, and the frontal lobe at the front. It all looks like brain to me, you might be saying, but these areas are actually divided by markers on the surface. See these deep grooves? These are called sulci, and these ridges, they're called gyri. If we keep that in mind, we can see that, for example, the frontal lobe is separated from the parietal lobe by the central sulcus, while the distinction between the parietal lobe and temporal lobes is created by this separation, called the sylvian fissure. These may seem like fairly arbitrary distinctions when we look at the whole brain, but each of these lobes has a distinct set of functions. At the back of the brain, we find the occipital lobe. This lobe is the smallest of the four, but it's really important. The occipital lobe is responsible for visual processing. The occipital lobe itself can be broken up into different areas that process images of objects and patterns, motion tracking, perceiving color, and mapping space. Above and in front of the occipital lobe, we have the parietal lobe. This is the key to processing sensory information from your body. This narrow band on top of the parietal lobe is called the somatosensory cortex and is responsible for processing your sense of touch. It's almost like a map of your body. 
the parietal lobe is also important for your real life sixth sense. Just kidding. Your sixth sense is something we call proprioception, which is the sense of your body in space. Below the parietal lobe, we find the temporal lobe. It's sort of a jack of all trades. This lobe contains the primary auditory cortex, important for our ability to hear and process speech and language. The temporal lobe also allows us to do some higher level visual processing, like recognizing faces and objects. Inside the temporal lobe, we find the hippocampus, a structure that is crucial in the formation and maintenance of new memories. We'll talk more about this in later segments, but feel free to check out this video for more information on how different brain injuries can cause some wild changes to your mind and memories. At the front of the brain, we have the largest lobe of them all, the frontal lobe. The name makes sense. This lobe is one of the major things that makes the human brain unique. We have an extremely large frontal lobe compared to other species. The frontal lobe is important for a lot of different processes. For example, right next to the parietal lobe and separated from the somatosensory cortex by just the narrow line of the central sulcus, we find the primary motor cortex. This region has a map of the body that sends out signals to control the use and movement of your limbs and muscles. Sort of like a remote control for your body. The frontal lobe is also important for a lot of higher level cognitive abilities. These include things like planning, motivation, attention, recognizing reward, self-control, emotional processing, decision-making, and a lot of other things. Damaging the frontal lobe can have huge effects on personality. It's so interesting to study, but we'll talk more about some of those things in other videos. But hang on, we're not done yet. Even though we usually think of the brain as just being this shape, it's important to remember that there are some extra pieces being left out of the big picture. Underneath the cortex, we find the thalamus, which acts as a relay station for sensory and motor signals and regulating sleep, while the hypothalamus plays a role in regulating your hormones. Behind the cerebrum, which is what scientists call the main portion of the brain, we have this structure that looks like a pile of spaghetti. It's called the cerebellum, or little brain, and it's very important for movement control. While the primary motor cortex in the frontal lobe is the controller of initiating motion, this structure contributes to the coordination and timing of movement, and also plays a big role in proprioception. So if you're uncoordinated, blame your cerebellum. Yeah. High five! Oh, Sorry. no, you gotta look at the elbow. Uh, no, get it. You know what, okay, let's stick to fist bumps. There you go. Finally, the brainstem, this narrow structure underneath the cerebellum, is considered the most ancient brain structure. That is, this is probably the first region of the brain that evolved in our earliest ancestors. Cool. This structure has three subregions: the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the midbrain. All of the information transmitted between your body and your brain has to pass through this region. It also regulates your heart rate, breathing, sleep, and eating. So you should love your brainstem. It keeps you alive. Well, now we've painted a broad picture of your brain and understand a little bit about what the different parts do. In upcoming videos, we'll delve into the nitty gritty about these structures and their functions. If you're new to these parts, please subscribe. And if you All right, now we've learned about the brain structure, the four lobes of the brain, and lastly, we're gonna learn about right brain or left brain. Your brain is divided into two halves or hemispheres. Within each half, particular regions control certain functions. You may have heard people talk about being right or left brain dominant. We're going to learn more about that today. If you've heard people talk about being more left brain dominant, they are better at logic, sequencing, linear thinking, mathematics, facts, and thinking in words. Typically, those who are more right brain dominant are more artistic, they have better rhythm, they pick up on nonverbal cues, more creative, they use their imagination a little bit better, and are more in tune with feelings. Take a second to try to guess which side works more efficiently for you. Teachers, in a minute you're going to pause the video. Students are going to take a quick quiz to see if they are right-brained or left-brained. Please open your MacBooks and go to your Tiger Day class. There will be a link to the quiz in the counselor lessons under your Tiger Day class. I will be playing a video that goes along with these questions, but you do actually have to get into the quiz and answer the questions to get your results. 
I'm going to play the video now. Teachers, please pause the video if your students are not finished with the quiz by the time the video is done. So please, students, please make sure you're going to Tiger Days. Under Counselor Lessons, there's a quiz for right or left brain. I'm going to play the video. Okay, teachers, if your students are not finished with the quiz, please pause the video now. Have the students finish the quiz, and then you can start the video again. All right, now that everyone is finished, how did it go? How many of you are right brain dominant? Raise your hand. How many of you are left brain? Raise your hand. How many of you were split down the middle 50-50? If I was in your classroom, I would be raising my hand. Mrs. Belcher got 50-50. All right, were you right about your prediction? During the 1960s, thanks to research of psychobiologist and Nobel Prize winner Roger W. Sperry, it became very popular to take tests to see if you were right or left-brained. It is actually a myth, though. You, you can't be just right or just left-brained. Actually, probably unless you have some sort of brain damage. But for most of us, we use both sides of our brain. At one time, many people thought that they really had a dominant side that worked harder or even only worked, or even that only that side of the brain worked. However, we know now this isn't true. The two hem hemispheres are tied together by bundles of nerve fibers, creating an information highway. Although the two sides function differently, they work together and complement each other. You don't use only one side of your brain at a time. 
Hopefully you all enjoyed learning a little bit more about the brain. I know you have taken a lot of information in today about the brain during this lesson. We will be using this information to set the foundation for future lessons as well. When we all have a better understanding of how the brain works, we can begin to learn more about ourselves. We can better understand our own reactions to certain situations and other re others' reactions as well. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please don't forget to take the post test. The link is in your Tiger Day course. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.